Galaxy Collapse is a funny map. It was mapped during a time when its difficulty was far, far out of any player's range. In a lot of ways, it's more reminiscent of a show map like Centipede than a map anyone was actually meant to play, with its repeating symmetrical patterns that, while looking great, play terribly. Maybe it's because of this that top players were so attracted to the idea of getting a good score on the map. As AIM has progressed, the map has seen career-defining scores and become one of the most infamous AIM tests in the game. So how has Galaxy Collapse defined a generation of AIM, and what's next for the map? This is the history of Galaxy Collapse. But first, this video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Have you ever ran into this? Or this? Well then, Surfshark has you covered. Surfshark can transport you anywhere in the world, all while protecting your data from things like your ISP who might be after your information. There are also numerous use cases outside of privacy, like accessing websites that are blocked in your country, watching movies that are only able to be streamed outside of your country, and, little secret here, you can listen to albums early by switching to a country with a time zone ahead of yours. You can get all of this for only $2 a month if you use my link in the description. And on top of that, you'll also get a full three months for free. Now, back to the video. Galaxy Class was uploaded on December 24th of 2015. It was inspired by a Tycho map from a few months earlier, which had become famous for its difficulty. A trait which was shared between the two maps, probably because the song kind of necessitated it. The song starts at a 270 BPM, which is mapped as an alt section in the standard map. It's by far the easiest part, and it gets you comfortable with the map before it goes off the rails. Right after, the map slows down to 150 BPM, and then it starts accelerating. First past 200 BPM, then past 300 BPM, then past 400, and finally up to 520 BPM. This is mapped like you're supposed to alternate, but after 350 BPM, it really just becomes space dreams, until the map reaches 520 BPM, where it's basically just a 260 BPM stream. And then after this, you finally get to the hard part. Yeah. So the jump section slows down to a merciful 300 BPM. The jumps during this first section are mostly moderately spaced, at least by 10 star standards, but they have really uncomfortable angles that especially when combined with the high BPM make for a difficult playing experience to say the least. There's a break after this before the map heads into the second difficulty spike. Here's where everything kind of breaks down. After the first half that isn't that absurd, the map just loses it, and by the end, there's just a full screen 320 BPM star. That's what happens in the Galaxy difficulty, but everything said also goes for the Galactic difficulty, which is the same map with a space and buff and a harder ending. I'll be coming to the Galaxy difficulty in a lot more depth here though, because it's usually more interesting when players can actually play the map. In the months after the map was submitted, it would gain popularity because of how ridiculous its difficulty is. Many players would make attempts at a pass, and some would. Reviclia's pass at the top difficulty was the most impressive of these, as it was the only pass on that difficulty before the map was loved. 16 people would pass the easier difficulty, all of whom would earn a spot in the map's description. Now, you might say, but bro Master o, the top difficulty of this map has no passes. How could someone from 2016 do it, when no one can now? Well, this discrepancy is actually caused by a difference in HP. The original map had an HP of 2 for both difficulties, where this version has an HP of 3.5. This might not sound like a big difference, but it makes this section unpassable, unless you can actually play it. Which, spoiler, no one can. After the map was loved, it wouldn't take long before big names would start making attempts on it. Angel Sim would achieve the first pass with 135 misses, then Mokia would get the second pass with 100 misses, and then came Vaxay. Vaxay's play was a little bit different, because he would pass with an A rank and just 63 misses. For context, up to this point, Mokia had the lowest miss count at 100. It was a defining play, not just because of how impressive it was, but also because of the impact it had on how the map was played from then on out. This difference is made clear just from how scores were posted. Before the play, titles never included combo, but after it, every single one does. And the reason for this was that the score was so good that it shifted the goalposts from competing for the best miscount and accuracy to the best combo. 
and all of that because it was assumed that no one was going to beat Vax's score. The competition was now over who could hold the number one spot, and for a while that title would be Vax's, but it would be taken by someone who would become a mainstay on the map, Wub Wolf, Wolf who would get a 1300 combo and take the number one spot. Then just a few weeks later, he would top his own score at DreamHack. This score was another extremely important one, but for totally different reasons than Vaxay's play, as this play would amass over a million views. By this point, it was already clear that the map was a fan favorite. For example, both of Reviclia's most viewed videos are Galaxy Collapse, and Vaxay's play on the map was also quite popular. But Wobblewolf's play was on a different level. It was the definitive start of Galaxy Collapse becoming stupid popular. So popular that it would eventually make the map go from famous to infamous. Wobblewolf would also take the number one spot on Galactic from Index. For the next year after, Wobblewolf would hold number one on both maps. He dominated Galaxy Collapse, and it didn't seem like the end of his reign was in sight. He had optimized the start of the map, and that was what mattered, because it became so difficult after that that no one was able to combo. But then, within just two weeks, both of his number ones would be taken. His top difficulty number one by Flying Tuna, and his galaxy difficulty number one by Varvalian. Both of these scores didn't beat Wobbuffle's combo, but instead played the diff spike better. It's especially clear in Flying Tuna's play, where he gets this absolutely absurd combo at the end. Wobbuffle wouldn't give up on his number ones without a fight though, and soon after, he would start attempting the galaxy difficulty with Hidden but for the time being, he would only be able to take the number 2 spot. Just a day after this, Raphis would put some attempts into the galaxy difficulty, and do something truly unexpected. And that was becoming the first person in 3 years to beat Vaxay's miscount, with a sound 53 misses. Raphis' score would become the lowest submitted miscount for 6 months. But during that time, a little known player would claim to have beaten his miscount by an astonishing 20 misses. Now, who could this guy be? Well, he called himself White Cat, and over the next six months, he would be unbanned and take the number one spot. During his rise to the top, he would get the best miscount on the map, not once, not twice, but three times, with the final play having just 14 misses, giving him the best miscount by 39. Despite this, he wouldn't take number one on the map, and that was because of a bounty. A bounty was placed on Galaxy Collapse that gave $225 to anyone who could get above 1800 combo. Vaxa and Flying Tuna would both try their hands at this, and both players would pull off unprecedented combos in the map, with Vaxa getting an insane 1600 combo and Flying Tuna somehow outdoing that with a 1700 combo. Funnily enough, neither player got the bounty, and to this day no one has. To some, this might imply that nothing interesting has gone on since. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Because despite his complete dominance on the map, White Cat wasn't done with Galaxy Collapse. Because just days after his 14 miss, he would set one of the most impressive plays the game has ever seen. Holy shit! Six misses on Galaxy Collapse. A map that was barely meant to be played, let alone nearly FC'd. He managed to get almost 50 less misses than any other player. It was a career-defining play on one of the most iconic maps in Osu, and the video of it currently sits at over a million views for good reason. Now, at this point, any normal person would have been satisfied, but White Cat, well, he had a different agenda.
First, he would get the first Hard Rock Pass on Galaxy, claiming a $55 bounty. And then he would choke a one miss on the map. There honestly aren't words for this play. Just maybe a reminder that a few years earlier, 63 misses was seen as unbeatable. And just months earlier, no one had been able to get less than 50 misses. At this point, he may as well have been playing a different game. And that's where Galaxy Collapse stands today. In my mind, Galaxy Collapse will always be the quintessential jump map. Nearly every top player since 2016 has put in attempts on the map. And because of this, a few truly staggering scores have been set. It's a map that has gotten persistent attention across generations, and with how AIM has been going recently, I wouldn't be all too surprised if this map were to get an FC within the next few years. But until that day, players will be pushing themselves to overcome a titan of an AIM map, and pushing the boundaries of the playstyle in the process. And I think that's pretty cool.